Welcome to our digital field trip. My name is Johan van Bouillon from Intaba. Our mission is to make conservation practical. We're going to be going through some of the rehabilitation sites, sharing some of the lessons learned, the frustrations and the good times. Enjoy! It's Phil McLean and I'm the task manager for River Iron Rehabilitation Management and Bioremediation within the Department of Environmental Affairs and Development Planning for the Western Cape. My directorate run what's called the Berg River Improvement Program or the BRIP of which the rehabilitation sites are a component. The rehabilitation sites are a plan to remove invasive alien plants in riverine habitats to provide more water and to improve the quality of water. There are quite a few uh, EPWP type projects that remove invasive alien plants. What makes these projects different is the use of active rehabilitation in the restoration. Active rehabilitation is just a fancy way of saying we then, after the clearing of the alien species, we replant the area with locally sourced indigenous vegetation. This has a number of benefits, uh, the main one being that it provides a level of competition uh, for returning invasive alien plants which makes the success of these cleared sites a lot better. The other one is that it very quickly improves the functional diversity of the space. Uh, studies have shown that in areas that are simply cleared of invasive species and left, if you want to call it, to uh, rehabilitate on their own with some sort of successional uh, regrowth of plants, that certain species like nectar feeding birds, for instance, sometimes don't occupy the space for 10 years or more without uh, the species that they rely on. And they're a fundamental part of that environment. The third part uh, of this rehabilitation that makes it better than just straight clearing is that it can be adaptive. Another example again with birds is that instead of necessarily clearing all standing trees from a site in the kind of scorched earth policy that other clearing projects rely on, we're allowed to remove or ring bark certain trees so that they die standing and allow perches for raptors or nesting sites for other birds while the understory continues to grow up around them. So the restoration of the ecology in the area is much enhanced by doing active rehabilitation. The investment in ecological infrastructure is basically the stuff that the environment does for us for free. That investment allows us to be more resilient and to be buffered against other stresses that come along like climate change, uh, like drought in the Western Cape and even things like changing agricultural practices. EI or ecological infrastructure investment is the key to sustaining our human functionality in this space and on the planet. Okay, 2020 has been an interesting year. So, when we're going to go through the sites now, we're going to start on the Berg River, we're going to start with Bosblast. From there on, we're going to go to Isiri and Cape Kairos and the road. Then, that's all, those last three sites are on the, on the Kleinberg. And then from there on, we're going to go to Furi Vin, and we're going to skip a one site, and we're going to go have a look at the Palmit Wetland, which is a Remeren, and then we're going to go on to Waterfall Lodge. Once we finish at Waterfall Lodge, we're going to go start with the Breda site. We're going to start with one of the catchments from Elands Kloof, and then we're going to go to the Whip, which is on the main stream. My name is Monique from Dutters. I'm from Paul and currently do my master's at Stellenbosch University. My research focuses on evaluating these active rehabilitation initiatives in the Berg Breda catchment. A big focus of this research is aimed at asking how valuable active rehabilitation is in comparison to spontaneous succession. With this, we are hoping to publish and provide some input to rehabilitation practitioners. All in all, establishing the extent to which active rehabilitation initiatives have been successful in promoting native vegetation recovery is very important for further upscaling across the region and also nationally. Much of the Berg River main stem channel is, or until recently was, lined with dense eucalypts. They provided a poor quality of riparian habitat with no understory and confined the high flows to the river channel, which led to it being steadily more incised. Today the channel is deep and steep-sided, 
This means that there's a large vertical differential between water level at summer flow levels versus in wet season or flood flows. Normally, flows would have risen gradually up a gently sloped bank and overtopped into secondary channels and finally into the floodplain. Today, most of the secondary channels are defunct because of the depth of the main channel. This is a loss of an important riparian habitat type. So the goal is to rehabilitate um, the area after clearing the aliens by reintroducing suitable growth forms rather than to restore the intact riparian scrub that we've been there before. Um, and a good idea was to, to develop communities that are likely to be more closely similar to those of fire refuges, as we don't have fires anymore, so that they would contain more trees, more Afro-temperate related trees, in addition to riparian scrub species. Hij was bij een rivier Wilgers daar. Ja. Hij was bij het in die rivier geweest, die geelhoutbomen. Um, die kolen is nog wel in. Onze dan nou die voorrecht om hulle weer terug te plant. Ja. En dat is voor mij bij belangrijk. Esera Lodge operates in the tourism sector. With the busy main road in close proximity, some of the eucalyptus trees were ringbarked but left to create a natural barrier from the road. Several of these trees had to be left in a less than ideal location, but will be removed as the indigenous barrier takes over. These have been planted out on dripper lines to aid establishment. And what's very important is the research component to evaluate the effectiveness of the various stages of this project and this is from germination and propagation success in the nursery through to establishment success in the field at at least three sites. Hi, my name is Georgina van Bouillon. On the sites, I'm measuring their height and their survivability, so their growth. And each plant that we plant here has got a different color coded ribbon. And um, so there are a few different plant species planted at each dripper. <clears throat> and we measure them um, two times a year. Rehabilitation of smaller tributaries of the berg can be more rewarding. These are not as incised and many still have se active secondary channels and floodplains. An important aspect in planting is making sure that the secondary channels are kept open and not artificially planted up with trees and large woody shrubs which will block flows and cause erosion. Cape Kairos is a site without an irrigation system. Research is conducted in test holes of 1 by 1 meter and 30 centimeters deep. Some of these holes have been inoculated with activated biochar, microorganisms from one of the remnant indigenous sites, and some left as control. The intention is to manually water the site during the first dry season. We have created a footpath for maintenance purposes with the long-term objective of the footpath linking adjacent rehabilitation sites. In South Africa, studies to measure the success of restoration after the removal of alien invasive species are usually focused on plants. However, despite being excellent bioindicators, invertebrates are not often used in restoration studies. Kalimbala or springtails are found to be excellent indicators of soil biodiversity as they have an abundance of species that occupy a wide range of ecological niches. This group is also very sensitive to changes in their habitat and respond to a wide range of environmental and ecological factors. They are important decomposers as well as important prey to a wide variety of natural predators such as spiders and predatory mites. In this study we will specifically look at the below ground effects of invasive alien plant species removal and active restoration by sampling Kalimbala species richness at different rehabilitated sites along a riparian zone in the Western Cape. The first road site was cleared, fenced and planted in August 2019. The fence keeping cattle out of the rehabilitated site being indicated by the yellow arrow. The second site was only cleared and a control area left. For recolonization by wet bank species propagules dispersed from upstream, um, provided that you know the invasive vegetation is cleared and the stream banks are not too steep to allow them to lodge and germinate. However, for the dry bank vegetation, spontaneous succession is less likely or would be very slow as a result of seed bank depletion and limited dispersal from upstream remnants. 
and also the lack of fire. This is a valley bottom wetland in good condition, upstream from Fuerdivent rehabilitation site. Rehabilitation on Waterfall Country Lodge started with selective removal of invasive vegetation in February of 2020. Selected invasive trees were temporarily left to provide shade in the activity and team building areas of the lodge. A valuable lesson learned at Waterfall was to ringbark blackwood to stop continuous resprouting. One of the long-term visions of Ntaba is to create an indigenous corridor between the mountain, the Ubiqua, and the Berg River, with Waterfall Nature Reserve in the south and the Nivercliff Pass in the north. This whole area forms an important catchment for the full flay dam, which in turn serves most of the Cape Winans areas. Palmeet is a great candidate for bioengineering. It is tough, resilient to droughts and a range of water qualities and forms a very effective erosion protection edge along the riverbank. One of the successes of the Berg River Improvement Project has been cultivating palmeet in the nursery in large quantities for replanting. Intact vegetation upstream from the site as well as well-kept historical data assisted with plant selection in this rehabilitation site. Rian Bota, ons, um, ons boer weer in die brede rivier van Lai plaas is de hoop waar ons geglo het ons ons maak die rivier nou oop en hy gaan nou beter vloei. Ehm um, het het was ons eintlik besig om die om die hele rivier se natuurlike vloei te troon te versteer. Ehm um, ons het die ons het die spoed van die van die rivier uh, vloei vloei um, tempo van die rivier opgejaag. Ja. Yeah. Maar die wat ons om eintlik 'n kanaal bestuur het soos 'n kanaal. Ja. Yeah. Um, maar ons het ons het die rivier verkeerd bestuur oor baie jare so dit is seker maar ons verantwoordelikheid om om nou weer daai insette te maak en en ons moet bereid wees om vir 'n hele klompe jare dan nou te wag om te sien hoe hy weer terugkeer mm. um, met met die nodige onderhoud en ondersteuning van ons kant af om om te sorg dat dit weer terugkeer na hoe hy behoor te wees Sometimes it takes just a small blockage of tree in the wrong place to lead to erosion Gum trees left too low down the river bank and snag trees and branches that wash down in the river in floods. This creates much bigger blockages, leading to bed and bank scar that can create permanent severe degradation. So removing trees, even saplings, low down the river bank should be a priority. Relevant genetic plant material gets collected through seeds and cuttings. Plants are propagated in various sizes until they're ready to be relocated to the appropriate restoration sites. Some of the plants are tricky to propagate. We plan to make useful tips and advice available through future video releases. Growing our own plants is key in ensuring that genetically correct material is grown with a key focus on the survival rate of plants out in the rehab sites. Over the last couple of years, especially during the lockdown period, we have repeatedly realized that on ground level, we cannot separate the ecological restoration processes that we are busy with from the social components in our communities where this is happening in. And we do have the responsibility for both these elements. The following clips are small windows into the lives of some of the people that are integrally involved in our programs. Iman of iets moet drastisch gedoen word. En soos dit nou gaan is ons bezig om, ek meen soos ons by die koeie kreeg ons plan plan te vir lewe. En ons plant soke mooi plante en ons maak al die rivier en alles doen ons om het te verbeter, maar wat gaan ons sa wat van die samenleving? Uh. Ek meen wie gaan vir hulle verbeter as as niemand like almal kyk hier vaartekens mis. Yeah. Ek is kyk die Peter hom. En vanmorgen is het ek met 'n probleem en ek vra ek soek help. Alles dringend want ek sit met 'n groot probleem. My kinders is betrokke by die drugs en dit is vir my moeilik om dit te aanvaar dat maak seer en dit vernietig nie net vir hulle nie maar dit vernietig ons as ouers. Ons lewe in gevaar. Ek dink as wanneer jy ingie as ek kom op stel het so as ek my lewe kyk uh, en kyk ek hierop vir en waar moet jy nou besig? Ja. Jy is nou bezig om 'n rivier te herstel met die bome van jou. Ja. As ek na my lewe kyk, 
Tawas baya Dunia milu ibu mak andra ngar bu mak Tawas baya andra ngar sama ili ya mak Dan suji nau Di andra ngar sa'id Ed riyan si alfa ma'i khayal bu Mi andra ngar sa'id ma'i li ba itan ya mak Wil jy Wil jy een nalatingskap los Waar op jou kinder kan trots wees Of wil jy nog een bot Nog een blok hanger Nog een hektar hanger plant Ehm Dit gaan nooit makkelijk wees, want het is nie, is thans nie eerst makkelijk om jou somme te laat klop nie, maar ek dink is weer een van die goed, jy moet net vir jouself sê, wil jy die rechte ding doen en nie die uitkomst, die reward, gaan maar baie lang na die tyd eerst kom. Ok, I just want to thank everyone for taking the time to watch through the whole video. So we're just going to do some of the basic conclusions now. So with this short digital field trip, we didn't have time to go into detail, but we've got a lot of information that we've gathered over the years, and we would like to share it. So if you're interested in something specifically, please please ask us, and then we're really re planning to, to release some videos, some short videos on specific topics, from why certain irrigation systems are used, why we use charcoal, how we make the charcoal, how we activate it, We've got a whole bunch of information that we're very keen also on how plant selections are done um, that we can go into much more detail in the future. So I've been involved with restoration in various aspects for 14 years and I've realized a lot of important things. The main one is that we've, we all need restoration in one aspect or another and that's on a personal level and then with the environment it needs, it needs our help and it needs assistance and you can only contribute what you've got and that is what you need to do.